Welcome to the channel and thank you for choosing to watch this video. My name is Jonathan and I work in the offshore global business industry. In a previous video, we covered company outstanding shares versus issued shares by going over their definitions, applications and key differences. In this video, entitled Ordinary Shares and Preference Shares Explained, we shall be covering the said types of shares issued to shareholders, focusing primarily on private companies. First, we will cover ordinary shares by going over their definition, how they work and their advantages. Second, we will tackle the definition of preference shares and see how they also work. And finally, we will analyze and dissect the major differences between both types of shares in terms of voting rights and rights to dividends and distributions. I hope you enjoyed this video and as usual, I wish you a reflective and insightful viewing. So, let's define ordinary shares. Ordinary shares in a private company, also referred to as common shares in various jurisdictions, signifies a fractional ownership stake in the corporation that releases it. Holding such a share grants the shareholder the right to participate in a company's significant decisions, which are typically determined at shareholder meetings. In addition to the voting rights, shareholders may or may not receive dividends, which depends on whether the constitution of the company stipulated such during the time of the company's incorporation or through an alteration at a later point in time. We covered constitutions regarding their adoption and alteration a few days ago, so if you have not watched the video, please do so after this one, as it is truly informative and insightful. The decision to distribute dividends lies with the company's board of directors who determine whether dividends will be paid out and the amount to be allocated. Dividends essentially reflect the shares owner's portion of the corporation's profits accumulated over a specific period, often a quarter or a year. Ordinary shareholders possess the entitlement to a company's remaining profits, often referred to as residual profits. Essentially, this means they have the right to receive dividends if any remain after the company has fulfilled its obligations to preferred or preference shareholders. However, this entitlement may not always translate into actual dividends, as the company's directors may choose to reinvest all available funds into the business, leaving no surplus for dividend distribution. In the event of a company's collapse, ordinary shareholders also have a claim to a portion of the residual economic value. However, their position is subordinate to that of creditors and preference shareholders in bankruptcy proceedings, placing them at the back of the line for any remaining assets. Consequently, ordinary shareholders typically find themselves in a similar position to unsecured creditors. Ordinary shareholders assume higher financial risk compared to preference shareholders within a company, yet they also stand to potentially gain greater rewards. In instances where a company generates significant profits, preference shareholders are limited to fixed amounts they are entitled to through dividends while ordinary shareholders have the opportunity to share in any excess profits amongst themselves. This holds true even in scenarios such as acquisitions where startups are bought by larger corporations, with ordinary shareholders often benefiting the most. In addition to their entitlement to residual profits, shareholders have the right to vote for the company's board members and to receive and approve the annual financial statements. While some preference shareholders may also hold voting rights, depending on the rights in the constitution, this privilege is more commonly associated with ordinary shareholders. If you are enjoying the content of this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could post a like on the video and perhaps even subscribe to the channel, as this would help my growth with the YouTube algorithm and analytics to reach a wider audience. Lastly. If you would be interested in being a sponsor of the next video for 30 to 60 seconds, feel free to email me at theglobalbusinesschannel at gmail.com to discuss further. Now, 
back to the video. Preference shares, often known as preferred shares, represent a type of company share where dividends are dispersed to shareholders before dividends are allocated to common or ordinary shareholders. In the event of the company facing bankruptcy, preference shareholders have priority in receiving payment from the company's assets ahead of ordinary shareholders. Unlike ordinary shares, which typically lack fixed dividend amounts, most preference shares offer a predetermined dividend rate. Additionally, preference shareholders commonly do not possess voting rights, distinguishing them from ordinary shareholders, who generally enjoy voting privileges. This setup underscores the preferential treatment according to preference shares in terms of dividend payments and asset distribution during bankruptcy proceedings. Preference shares can be categorized into four main types. Cumulative preference shares, non-cumulative preference shares, participating preference shares, and convertible preference shares. Cumulative preference shares obligates the company to pay shareholders all dividends, even those omitted in the past, before ordinary shareholders can receive their dividends. While these dividend payments are guaranteed, they may not always be dispersed on schedule. Any unpaid dividends are referred to as dividends in arrears and must be paid to the current owner of the shares when dividends are distributed. Sometimes additional compensation such as interest is granted to holders of this type of preference shares. Non-cumulative preference shares do not provide for any missed or unpaid dividends. In the event that the company decides not to distribute dividends in a particular year, shareholders of non-cumulative preference shares have no entitlement or authority to demand these dividends at any point in the future. Participating preference shares gives shareholders the privilege to receive dividends at a fixed rate, along with an extra dividend under specific conditions. This additional dividend is usually paid only if ordinary shareholders receive more than a set per share amount. In case of liquidation, participating preference shareholders may also receive their shares purchase price back, along with a portion of the remaining proceeds received by ordinary shareholders. Convertible preference shares provide shareholders with the option to exchange their preference shares for a specific number of ordinary shares, typically after a predetermined date. Generally, shareholders can initiate this exchange when they choose. However, there may be provisions in a company's constitution allowing either shareholders or the company to enforce the conversion. In the event of a company's bankruptcy, various shareholders will have rights to the company's assets determined by specific agreements. Preference shares typically hold priority over ordinary shares, ensuring they are compensated before ordinary shareholders. Preference shares typically lack voting rights at meetings of shareholders, distinguishing them from ordinary shares. However, they offer a distinct advantage over ordinary shares in terms of dividend entitlement. Preference shareholders enjoy priority in receiving dividends, irrespective of whether the company is operating or undergoes liquidation in the future. Financially, they do get priority over ordinary shares. This assurance makes preference shares a favorable option for investors seeking stable income streams. Generally, preference shareholders receive predetermined dividends at regular intervals, such as monthly, quarterly, or yearly. This predictable income stream enhances the appeal of preference shares as a less risky investment compared to ordinary shares, which may offer fluctuating dividend payments. Nevertheless, there is a downside to this stability. If a business experiences significant growth, preference shareholders may not benefit from increased dividend payments proportionate to the company's success. Their fixed percentage of yearly dividends established during the issuance of share certificates or as stated in a company's constitution limits their participation in the company's prosperous periods. 
In contrast, ordinary shareholders may in some instances, and once again, depending on the provisions of a company's constitution, receive dividends that can carry and vary in amount from year to year, reflecting the company's performance and profitability. Despite the potential for higher dividend payments during favorable business conditions, ordinary shares entail greater risk due to their lower priority status in dividend distribution and lack of preferential treatment in liquidation scenarios. So, preference shares versus ordinary shares, which is better? The question of whether preference shares are superior to ordinary shares doesn't have a straightforward answer. It varies based on the particular company and its specific constitution. While preference shareholders typically receive dividends before ordinary shareholders, this may not always be true in every situation. In the next video, we shall be covering companies' shares issued at par value or no par value. Just as this video, we shall be explaining each type and going over their key differences. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video until the end. This is hugely appreciated by me and I hope it provided you with valuable information, insights and key takeaways. If you enjoyed the content of this video, it would mean a lot if you would click on the like button to help with the YouTube algorithm if you haven't done so already. As always, I will be posting frequent and insightful content, so feel free to come back to the channel for more videos concerning the offshore global and financial services industries. Stay safe and healthy, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheerios.